people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. After the UK last week, New Delhi has carved out a major trade deal with the European Union this week when the two sides announced the formation of Trade and Technology Council to enhance cooperation at multiple fronts. European Union, which is the third largest trading partner of India, will provide greater market access to New Delhi, while India may provide duty concessions on several items. In a major breakthrough in European Union and Indian relationship, the two sides agreed past week to set up a Trade and Technology Council to step up cooperation. Ursula von der Leyen, the President of European Council, was in Delhi this week to provide a further impetus to the bilateral ties and her visit turned out to be fruitful with the setting up of the body. The Trade and Technology Council will provide the political steer and the necessary structure to operationalize political decisions, coordinate technical work and report to the political level to ensure implementation and follow-up in areas that are important for the sustainable progress of European and Indian economies. The agreement that was reached after several rounds of extensive talks between both sides and was long overdue according to the experts has been welcomed by both the sides. Earlier today, we announced the launching of the Trade and Technology Council as well. This coordination mechanism will facilitate our working together on expanded trade, on trusted technologies, and on security. This is the first time India has agreed to set up such a Trade and Technology Council with any of its partners. For the European Union, it is only the second such body following the first one set up with the US. While the EU's key demands include duty concessions for automobiles, dairy products and wines and spirits, India is batting for greater market access in financial services and mobility for professionals. Ursula also acknowledged India's energy goals of adding 500 gigawatts of renewable energy to its electricity grid by 2030 to clean up air in its cities and lessen the rapidly growing economy's dependence on coal. India, the world's largest emitter of greenhouse gases, has pledged to cut emissions and have clean energy account for at least 40% of its installed capacity by 2030, up from 21.4% now while looking to manage its energy appetite as its population becomes more prosperous. I think India and the European Union have a lot in common. Um, I've looked at your goals to have 50% of energy coming from renewables in 2030. This is a very ambitious goal. Congratulations to that. We share the idea that we really have to look into solar energy, wind energy, biomass, hydropower, green hydrogen, a big topic, geothermal. So these are the ingredients for success. Both sides also committed to strengthen their partnership and deepen bilateral cooperation with a focus on upholding the rules-based global order, supporting economic recovery, fighting climate change and charting the digital transition. India is already a key strategic partner for the European Union. The 27-member European Union is India's third largest trading partner accounting for close to $66 billion worth of trade in goods in 2020 or 11.1% of total Indian trade. 
after China at 12% and the US at 11.7%. The European Union is the second largest destination for Indian exports, 14% of the total after the US. Given their size, economic performance and energy needs, India and the European Union are key in the transition to a more sustainable and green future. Observers say, with both believing in rules-based order and sharing similar values, their potential is much more than what has been tapped till now and a strengthened alliance could prove to be win-win for both sides. Moving on, people in Afghanistan are complaining that they are not receiving even the aid that is being provided to them by other countries. Recently, hundreds of them were seen lining up for the handouts distributed by a Saudi Arabian organization, but many more didn't receive anything. People in Afghanistan are on the cusp of acute poverty, with millions of them projected to fall in that category in coming months if the countries do not intervene with major support. Hundreds of men and women lined up in capital Kabul to collect food handouts which authorities received from Saudi Arabia last week. The $1 million project is funded by the King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center based in Riyadh, being run by a Muslim charity and will cover seven Afghan provinces. دغه پروژه چې د سعودي عربستان د حکومت لخوا په ځانګړي توګه د مرکز ملک سلمان چې په سعودي په ریاض کې موقعیت لري د هغه لخوا نه د دې فنډ ورکړل شوی ده دا په افغانستان کې څه د پاسه یو میلیون ډالرو پروژه ده چې د توحید مؤسسې لخوا نه دا تطبیق کیږي Some locals, however, complained that not all the aid had reached its intended destination, with some of it being detained by the Taliban, who took over the country last year after the Americans and their allies withdrew their forces. People in Afghanistan stand on the cusp of extreme food insecurity as their stores have dried up, production is not sufficient to meet people's needs, and enough support hasn't reached common people owing to international community's reluctance with Taliban at the helm of affairs. As per different international organizations, roughly 23 million people face acute food insecurity as Afghanistan also experiences its worst drought in 30 years. ما جامدیم به خاطر امی کمکی که سرامیش بر ما کده ما دایم قدیر ما, ما بیوستم رفت عطیم دارم کرای خانه میتم و بسیار مشکلات ها رو بروستم بیاداره کم ایت در مشکلات ما کس رسیدگی نمی کنه بیس توک زمان پر یاد ناوری چه غیبو کم بکم میره میچه پا کور که ماشومان و هی منگ بد و رس کهی بی خیز زمان و زیاد خانه ده ایس توک زمان پر یاد ناوری ما باز دقل تا کمک ده پر راغل دو ساید خود خوب که چه اولین زل Although a number of countries and global bodies have reached out to assist Afghans in these testing times, it is the India's continued humanitarian assistance that has so far stood out. Under a memorandum of understanding signed with the World Food Programme for the distribution of wheat within Afghanistan, India has been sending wheat consignments at regular intervals to Afghans. India has already supplied 500,000 doses of Covaxin vaccines and 13 tons of essential life-saving medicines to Afghanistan. India has been pitching for providing unimpeded humanitarian aid to Afghanistan to address the unfolding humanitarian crisis in the country. India has also been pitching for the formation of a truly inclusive government in Kabul, besides insisting that Afghan soil must not be used for any terrorist activities against the country. After students, teachers and other government employees too have joined the demonstrations against the Rajapaksa administration, urging them to step down. The island nation, which has been in massive debt crisis, saw a single reprieve in the form of World Bank committing to provide $600 million in coming times. Schools remained shut and train stations wore deserted look. 
as teachers and train drivers join mass walkouts demanding President Gotabaya Rajapaksa's government to quit over Sri Lanka's worst financial crisis in decades. Hundreds of employees from Sri Lankan state-run banks, most wearing black and carrying black flags, also joined other bank trade unions in a protest march to the president's office as thousands of people took to the streets around the country. The pandemic, rising oil prices, populist tax cuts and rapidly dwindling foreign currency reserves have left Sri Lanka without enough dollars to pay for vital imports of fuel, food and medicine. Sometimes violent street demonstrations have erupted this month as shortages and power cuts became acute. The country's trade union leaders have threatened an ongoing strike from May 6 if the president and the government do not resign. Thousands of university students in Colombo hit the streets to demand President Gotabaya Rajapaksa and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa to step down. The economy of the nation of 22 million people melted down after a large 2019 tax cut by President Gotabaya Rajapaksa drained government coffers and COVID-19 hit the lucrative tourism industry. Foreign reserves fell 70% over the past two years to $1.93 billion, leaving Colombo struggling to pay for such essentials as fuel, medicines and food. ಅಪೀಟರ್ರಟೆ <laughs> Meanwhile, the World Bank has agreed to provide Sri Lanka with $600 million in financial assistance to help meet payment requirements for essential imports. However, before the IMF finalizes a program for Sri Lanka, the country needs $3 to $4 billion in bridge financing to help meet its essential expenses. Colombo hopes it can conclude the IMF aid talks in about six months, but it cannot control how long negotiations will take. SNP Global Ratings this week cut Sri Lanka's foreign currency debt rating to selective default after it missed interest payments. Analysts say social unrest, political uncertainty and a complex web of creditors could scupper Sri Lanka's push for a swift overall of its $12 billion overseas debt. And it is running out of the road for now, unless a miraculous turn of events pulls it out of the crisis. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Israelis on April 28th paused to the sound of a lamenting single-tone siren across the country, marking Israel's Holocaust Remembrance Day in commemoration of the 6 million Jews killed by the Nazis during the Second World War. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett and President Isaac Herzog attended a wreath-laying ceremony at Yad Vashem Holocaust Memorial Museum in Jerusalem. Israelis across the country, including those in coffee shops, roads and train stations, came to a standstill when a two-minute siren wailed through the streets. (laughs) 
Indian External Affairs Minister Subramaniam Jaishankar was in Dhaka this week for what has largely been described as laying of groundwork for the significant meeting between the Prime Ministers of two countries later this year. Jaishankar held extensive talks with his counterpart A.K. Abdul Mehman and reviewed the gamut of ties between the two sides. Jaishankar also exchanged views with the Bangladesh PM Sheikh Hasina on bilateral, regional and international issues of mutual interest. He also conveyed Prime Minister Narendra Modi's invitation to her to visit India later this year. The two countries have held regular meetings at the highest level to keep pushing their ties towards North. Bangladesh, which recently celebrated 50th anniversary of its independence, has signaled towards a strong relationship with India. The two countries hope to see the early commissioning of many projects, including in the power and energy sector and in connectivity, and India is looking forward to stronger sub-regional cooperation in several areas. The two countries are also looking at the resumption of cross-border bus and railway services. Japanese company Panasonic has developed a sustainable smart town in Suita city of Osaka prefecture. It is the third town after Fujisawa and Sunashima in the Kanagawa prefecture that has been developed in this manner. It has been developed with the cooperation of residents, local government, administration, university and partner companies. The smart city has optimal facilities like a condominium, a service apartment, a shopping center and a childcare facility. Panasonic has declared Japan's first renewable energy 100% town, supported by virtually 100% renewable energy from Kansai Electric Corporation. Receiving of electricity from outside is undertaken by regular and spare two lines. This residence is for elderly people. Supporting maintenance of health based on personal data is available. It includes recommendation of ingredient of meal. Careful watching of elderly person is the characteristic of this town. Daily behavior data is gathered by sensing technology. It enables original care program and supporting elderly person's healthy life. The town offers a comfortable lifestyle and proper safety arrangements, including a daycare center, a community space, rental electric bicycles and 4K security cameras. Residents of Suita Sustainable Smart Town can get safe and satisfactory life. It is the happiest life provided by Panasonic. World production industry which has accelerated the shift to full automation of factory requires precise control technology to make robot working to complete its mission. Fanuc is the first Japanese company to develop a numerical control device. The development and control technology of motor and servo support factory working around the world. The concept of Fanuc's latest robot is that of collaborative one. The technology to ensure safety is equipped. The introduction of collaborative robot is attracting attention as a collaboration production system between human being and robot as a step towards full autonomous factory. Fanuc's robot technology is required to realize autonomous production, collaborating with human beings. Moving on to India's showbiz capital, Mumbai, that recently hosted the 40th edition of Hunar Hat. An initiative of the Ministry of Minority Affairs, the Fiesta aims to uplift the artisans, craftsmen and traditional culinary experts of the country. In Mumbai, Hunar Hat presented a wonderful confluence of craft, culture, music and food to the visitors. Have a look. Organized with the theme Craft, Cuisine and Culture, the 12-day-long Hunar Hat in Mumbai became a one-stop shop for credible and high-quality Swadeshi products. Music 
aimed at providing market exposure and economic impetus to artisans and craftsmen of the country, the event saw a participation of about 1,000 artisans from over 30 states and union territories this year. From handmade cloth bags to bronze and bamboo home decoration items, a number of products were displayed at the heart, leaving visitors spoiled for choice. Besides being a platform to preserve, protect and promote indigenous products, the event is also an opportunity to meet the faces behind the meticulously made products. ओडिसा एक मतलब एक बहुत कल्चरल हेरिटेज से भरा हुआ है आप सब जानते होंगे तो वहाँ का जो मेन आइटम है कांसे का जो हैंडमेड यूटेंसिल्स है कांसे का और पीतल का इन दोनों को हम प्रमोट कर रहे हैं क्योंकि अभी ये जो युग में ये मशीन जो मशीन से जो तैयार होने वाले जो बर्तन आ गए जैसे कांसे भी आ गया और पीतल भी आ गया तो अभी लोग इसको मतलब पूरा भूल चुके हैं जबकि ये चीज़ें उससे ज़्यादा क्वालिटेटिव है स्ट्रॉन्ग है और हेल्थ के ऊपर इन सब का बहुत ज़्यादा बेनिफिट रहता है जो हैंडमेड चीज़ें होते हैं As no festival or event in India is complete without food, Hunar Hat also set up a number of stalls offering several delectable items to relish. From Indian street food to famous Hyderabadi biryani to deserts, there was something for everyone. Hunar Hats are being organized in all parts of the country with the resolve of vocal for local and strengthen the idea of Atmanirbhar Bharat. पहली बार मैं यहाँ आया हूँ तो ऐसा लग रहा है कि पूरी भारत इकट्ठा एक जगह हो गई है मैंने जो हम लोग बचपन में पढ़ते थे कि विविधता में एकता और जो डाइवर्सिटी इन इंडिया वो रियली वो चीज मुझे आज दिख रही है और ये तो मैं पूरा श्रेय हम नरेंद्र मोदी जी को देना चाहेंगे हमारे नकवी जी को देना चाहेंगे मतलब कि चाहे खाने का कोई आइटम हो या कपड़ा हो पहनाव हो किसी भी स्टेट का किसी भी छोटे से जगह का लोकल पर वोकल जो मोदी जी का जो ये आवाज़ है ना वो बुलंद हो रही है वो दिख रही है और मुझे लगता है पूरे भारतवासियों को इसको सपोर्ट करना चाहिए और आगे बढ़ना चाहिए और देसी चीज़ों को यूज करना चाहिए विदेशी को क्या हो Besides promoting craft and food, Hunar Hat also enticed the visitors with its musical and cultural program. The circus shows remained the major attraction at the 40th edition of Hat as around 35 circus artists performed daily. Just within a short span of six years, Hunar Hats have been successful in providing employment opportunities to more than 9,50,000 artisans and craftsmen across the country, among which 50% are women. They are held as part of series of 75 Hunar Hats that are being organized under Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav to celebrate India's 75 years of independence. Hunar Hat is a great effort at projecting the talent of Indian artisans towards local to global. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.